right? So we have uh, four people here, so I'm going to start the lecture, right? So today we're going to discuss about the sensors and uh, sensing, right? So <clears throat> how many of you, uh, so you all did the second day electronics, right? Uh, yes, sir. Okay, right. Then you guys know what is sensing, right? <laughs> sensing basically means like uh, we have we are working in the analog world, you know, right? So all the stuff uh, surrounded, like the surround is basically in the analog, right? So what is basically mean by sensing is in the, this aspect, like uh, we're going to sense the outer world, right? Mm -hmm. Suppose this is our uh, sensor. Right, so these are the outer world. These are in the analog, right? So we basically go into uh, uh, sense some kind of aspect. It can be like suppose uh, temperature, right? That means heat or something like that, right? Then make it convert to some uh, digital uh, parameter, right? So that's the basic idea. So we're going to sense the analog world, then. Uh, that analog uh, sense, like uh, the heat or like humidity or whatever, right? Then you're going to uh, convert into some kind of a digital uh, measurement, right? So that's the basic idea. So so each sensor is basically uh, doing some uh, transduction to uh, uh, convert, like that means like suppose, uh, Heat, heat, uh, like temperature or something like that, right? So that this heat, so so we should uh, come up with some measurement, right? So like uh, Celsius or something like that, right? So in that case, this energy in here we have uh, energy form as heat, right? So then we're going to turn it into some kind of a uh, voltage or uh, current or something like that, right? Right. Basically, we're going to convert that into a voltage or something like that. So in that case, so this conversion, we basically, we, uh, we can refer as transduction, right? So the conversion from one energy source to another, right? So that's how we're going to uh, sense some uh, aspects, right? So, <clears throat> So it's basically in some kind of uh, energy form, right? Then when we are sensing it, basically that energy form, that uh, energy form change into another energy form, right? So that's how the energy is converted, right? So that's how we basically uh, measure the those analog uh, environmental aspects, right? So then like uh, we know like uh, when you are if you consider this thermistor right the, then uh, temperature we basically change to some resistance right so <clears throat> then electrochemicals like uh, any any chemical aspects change to a voltage right then photo current right like uh, what what you call that uh, ldr right so that basically uh, like uh, change that uh, light with the light intensity that the resistance changing right the current flow is going to increase something like that right then pyroelectric the thermal radiation to a voltage right like that there are some uh, <clears throat> transduction in the electronics right so every sensor basically uh, refers some uh, energy energy form in the outer world then change that energy form to a some kind of a uh, quantifiable uh, measurement, right? So if you consider this microphone, right? So that sound pressure to some, uh, like some kind of a wave, like a voltage or something like that, right? So this analog uh, aspects, right? Basically we refer that, then by using the sensor that the sensor do the hard work, it basically, uh, convert that uh, 
uh, analog uh, aspects to uh, some kind of a digital form, right? So in the sensor, we have that this uh, energy level uh, transition, right? Is it clear? Is it clear? Yes, sir. Right. Then the same thing we are in the human sensing as well, right? So by like uh, using our eyes, basically we see the things, right? The vision, right? <clears throat> then uh, hearing in the ears, we have the hearings like idea uh, that kind of like uh, like uh, pressure difference change to uh, uh, like convert into some kind of a sound something like that right so then the touch uh, or, or the like taste like that we have those uh, human senses as well right so based on that so like these are the same set of things like <clears throat> in the uh, uh, electronic uh, sensors as well it has some kind of uh, this transduction and change some kind of uh, energy from a different form, right? So when you are considering the sensors, right, you know now what is sensing, right? That means like uh, referring outer world, change to uh, some kind of digital form, right? Then we, we can basically classify these uh, sensors to set of, there are set of methods, right? So, so first one is based on the internal state and the external state of the robot, right? So we're going to discuss in the later part, right? Then uh, we have active and unactive, right? So active basically means like uh, uh, emitting energy into the environment, right? Then we have passive that basically means like uh, receiving energy from the outer world to the sensor, right? So if you consider some uh, uh, trade out like uh, right. some uh, sonar sensors, right? Those are basically sending, uh, suppose this is uh, IR sensor, something like that, right? So basically that IR sensor sending out some uh, signals, right? Then the, there can be some obstacles, then those can be reflected, right? There's a different story, right? <clears throat> so these are active sensors, right? Then uh, we have uh, non-active sensors. Those are basically like uh, uh, some uh, cameras or like uh, uh, photo sensors, right? So that those are basically receiving some energy from the outer world, right? So this is the uh, sensor, right? So it's receiving some energy and based on that energy, it's going to do some work, right? So first one, We'll discuss in the later, right? So the second one is the active and non-active. Then the third one is uh, contact and non-contact. That basically means like, uh, <clears throat> suppose we need to uh, have some kind of, uh, detect some uh, obstacle, right? So, so we can have set of uh, methods, right? So there can be sensors that are going to uh, like uh, touch this, obstacle and find okay there is obstacle right then there are there can be some uh, sensors that are basically uh, spreading uh, like uh, spreading some kind of uh, waves and uh, find the uh, find there is obstacle right so those are contact and non-contact sensors then uh, we have visual and non-visual right so that basically means like uh, some uh, sensors based on the vision right image processing or those stuff and some are non-visuals right so those are the set of categories the classifications we have right so in here basically we're going to discuss the internal state and the <clears throat> external state right so what is mean by this uh, internal state basically means like uh, suppose you have you're going to build some kind of a robot at the end of this lecture series right so there can be a there, there should be like a, some kind of a, a, a project you have to do right so keep that in mind as well right so <clears throat> if you consider this uh, robot right so it has some suppose it has some uh, moving parts like uh, this kind of 
hands or something like that, right? So these are uh, these can basically rotate, right? So suppose this is a joint, then basically it can rotate through this joint, right? So <clears throat> so these are considered as the internal state, right? Internal sensors, right? So how far it's uh, bending or like uh, how many rotations it uh, has, right? So how much angle it's bent, then the velocity of that, like that, you can basically refer to internal states of the robot, right? So those are basically considered as internal state sensors, <clears throat> right? Then uh, we have uh, external state sensors that basically we use for to sense the outer world, right? <clears throat> like, so it can be like robot kinematics or dynamics, right? It doesn't bother. We basically uh, uh, basically refer the surroundings, right? Based on that, we do some uh, manipulations, right? So suppose we have some uh, sort of like uh, uh, temperature sensors or the IR sensors, those stuff, right? Then uh, we have wheels, right? Or the gyroscope, those things, right? So basically, uh, <clears throat> this kind of, uh, <clears throat> like uh, if we have like uh, IR sensors or something like that, those are basically come under external state sensors, right? So basically the robot is moving, right? Support is set, it, uh, has an obstacle in front of that, right? So in that case, these uh, <clears throat> sensors will find the highest obstacle, right? So in that case, so the state is changing depend on the outer world, right? So that's why we can uh, refer it as external state sensors, right? So, <clears throat> so basic idea is we can divide it, all the sensors we can divide into two, right? So one is the internal state sensors, <clears throat> like uh, depend on the internal aspect of the robot, right? So the rotation, so the uh, angle or the velocity, those stuff. Then uh, <clears throat> external state sensors, basically we are referring the surroundings, right? Depend on the surroundings, the, the, the out, out, output of the sensor, become, <clears throat> output of the sensor change, right? So depend on the outer world. Right, that basically we the, those those sensors basically keep listing about the outer world uh, parameters or aspects, right? So if these as aspects are changing, or okay, the now the robots' external states are changing, right? So if there is obstacle, okay, now the robots can't move further, right? It should change the state to another, right? Rather than moving too forward, it should do some turns, right? Like that. So that's the basic idea of that. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Right. Then, uh, so <clears throat> when you are uh, picking uh, sensors for your robot, right? So there are some uh, set of taxonomy. So this is also not like a, uh, like uh, standard one, right? But you can follow this uh, set of uh, levels and pick a more suitable sensor for your case, right? So the first one is to like uh, <clears throat> that's so the now you're going to like uh, so the stories you need to pick some sensors for your task, right? Suppose your robot task is to do some uh, like uh, like uh, de uh, defect uh, identification or something like that, right? So you have a set of uh, set of uh, production items, set of boxes, right? So you have your robot here, right? So it has this kind of uh, arm, right? So this is your robot. So the task is to find any defects items. Right, so that's the task, right? So now we're going to see how we're going to pick a sensor for this scenario, right? So we have a set of uh, like five uh, levels.
to uh, go through and find the most suitable one, right? So first one is to first one is the specification of the task re requirement, right? So whether it's a localization problem or it's kind kind of like a defect testing or like a size confirmation, like there are first we need to get some idea about our task, right? So in here it is kind of a defect testing, right? Defect identification, right? <clears throat> so we have some boxes here, right? So we need to find the defected one, right? <clears throat> then, uh, so we need to now uh, choose the modulator, right? Whether we go into based on the vision, right? By looking at these boxes, so else we go into touch this box, right? Or like we need to then uh, pick the modality, right? So in this case, so the vision may be more suitable, right? Otherwise. We have like uh, uh, six sides now, right? So in this box, right? So we have six sides. So by touching the uh, all the sides will not be uh, practical, right? So, <clears throat> but uh, vision may be a good one, right? So you then you can pick a one like vision, right? Then uh, then we need to get some idea about our a specification of our sensor, right? So <clears throat> what will be the output of the sensor and how complex it is, then uh, whether the output is a discrete one or a continuous one, or whether we have uh, images of the uh, our <clears throat> boxes, or we going to have some kind of uh, like uh, one single parameter, right? So in this case, it kind of uh, like, uh, images right we based on the vision right we can have a, we can have some kind of a vision based sensor right so it basically gives some images of the box right then uh, we going to uh, decide about the operational aspects right so suppose you need to like have some very uh, uh, you have very uh, small area right this kind of you have very small area to do this task right in that kind of scenario so you should have some kind of idea about the size of the uh, sensor right then uh, if you have some kind of a very have limitations on the uh, pricing aspects then you need to think about the cost as, as well right then uh, <clears throat> how critical this is right so suppose this is kind of a life or death matter kind of that, then you have to uh, deal with the accuracy of the sensor, right? If it is give some uh, false uh, alarm, some kind of that, so that will be a very uh, damage, right? So <clears throat> you need to think about the operational parameters as well, right? Right? So first we have some, had some idea about the, our, First, we uh, have some idea about our task, right? Then we choose the modulator, whether we going to use the force or the tactile or the vision, right? Then we think about the sensor attributes, right? So what is what will be the output, then how complex it is, right? Those stuff. Then we discuss about the operational aspects of the sensor, right? Then finally, we can uh, do the selection, whether we're going to do some, uh, select some inductive sensors or some vision imaging sensors like that, right? So these are these steps are not the very standard ones, right? But you can uh, follow these uh, five levels and pick a more suitable uh, sensor for your case, right? So <clears throat> in that kind of, after going through the, all these aspects, right? So then you can pick the most suitable one for you, right? So <clears throat> that's the basic idea, right? So you can have your own taxonomies as well, right? But uh, I think these five steps will be enough, right? <clears throat> then, uh, <clears throat> so when we consider the sensors, right? Now we're going to, uh, going to discuss 
one by one of the sensors in the robots we can have, right? So one is the resistive sensors, right? So it can be like, uh, we can, go, we, we go discuss one by one, right? So resistive sensors basically uh, like, uh, <clears throat> it's something like this, right? So if you have like some uh, moving parts, right? So if you need to get some idea about how, like the idea about the bending, right? Suppose this is arm, right? Right? So now this arm is basically moving, right? Back and forth, right? So in this case, you need to have some idea about the angle of this arm, right? This joint, right? So for that, you can have some uh, resistive sensor, right? So th that sensor basically uh, do this kind of thing, right? So it's something like uh, uh, this kind of uh, sensor, right? So when it's bending, the resistive of this sensor changes, right? Right. So when it's so it's uh, clipped to this arm, right? When it's when the arm moving, the the sensor is bending, right? With bending, this uh, the resistive of this uh, sensor is changing, right? So now we have some kind of a idea about the uh, resistiveness, right? So based on that, we can tell. Okay, so this arm will uh, have this kind of a angle, right? Right, so those are the bend sensors, right? Then we have tactile sensors like uh, contact switches, like if we have a contact with the wall, suppose this is your, this kind of wall, right? So if, if it has a contact, right? So it's going to rest in that kind of scenario, it can identify, okay, there is a, uh, some kind of a wall in front of the sensor, right? So those sensors are, we have these, uh, Tactile sensor in the EB3, right? So, did you have some kind of a, a practicals on the uh, EB3? Did you guys try out some uh, practicals? Yes, sir. Uh, we use a simulator to do practicals. I am using the simulator. No? Okay, right. So, if we, if we have uh, like a chance, that will be better like you can basically uh, uh, physically you can uh, do some work on the EV tree, right? So that's a very, uh, that EV tree from the mindstorm, that's kind of a very advanced one, right? So it, I think it's about 10 or five years old, but still it has some uh, good uh, <clears throat> uh, sensors and good processor, right? So enough. Uh, Computation power, right? So, if you can come to the university, I think we can arrange some uh, practicals in the physical man, right? So, if you have any concerns, like right, please let us know. Then we can have some arrangements, right? Then uh, we had infrared sensors, right? So in the EB3, so I'll show you the some example, right? So EV3, it has one single sensor that can do all the work, right? So, so that IR sensor basically, uh, yeah. can you guys see the screen? Hello. Okay. So this is the uh, IR sensor, this one. This one is the IR sensor, right? So it can, uh, we have a specific, okay, right. So these are the set of sensors we have, right? So <laughs> this is the touch sensor. This is the infrared one. And this is the color sensor, right? And we have an infrared beacon as well, right? So we can use it as some kind of a, like a remote for the infrared sensor, right? So <clears throat> that EV3 is a very uh, uh, advanced one, right? You can see like when you are 
taking the color sensor, it can do like can I did whether there are a set of modes, right? Whether we whether it's going to work on the reflective manner or work on the ambient color, like that. There are a set of modes, right? From one single sensor, it can do several. It can have several modes basically, right? We'll try to arrange some. Uh, uh, <clears throat> physical practicals, right? Then you can get some uh, proper idea about this, right? Then uh, we have ultrasonic, ultrasonic distance sensors, then initial initial sensors, <clears throat> then uh, orientation sensors about like uh, compass like that, then uh, laser range sensors, vision, GPS, right? So these are the set of sensors in the robotics we have right so we're going to discuss today about like uh, resistive sensor and uh, the infrared sensors right then the laser range. so we're going to discuss these three on the today's lecture right <clears throat> so these are the uh, some examples right so you know probably you know this one right so this is the uh, sharp ir sensor right then uh, you probably know this one as well and this is this uh, resistive bend sensor right what else we have the magnetic sensor hmm. what else the gas sensors right so most of these sensors basically i think uh, you get familiar when you guys in the second day electronics right so <clears throat> So those sensors basically we can adapt to the robotics as well, right? So just we we just need to refer the outer world, you no know, surroundings, right? So if the sensor has the capability and the accuracy, in that case we can use those sensors, right? So nothing, uh, nothing new here, right? <clears throat> so now we're going to discuss about the resistive sensors, right? So these sensors are bend sensors, right? So this is the bend sensor, right? So resistance, they tell like from 10K to 35K, right? So when this uh, strip is bending, right? So the resistive become resistance increasing, right? So we can attach into some kind of a hand, right? Something like this, right? So it's you can clamp into like this, right? When this hand is moving, right? Now the resistance will change, right? So that's a some kind of a quantifiable measurement, right? Based on the resistance, we can get some idea about the angle, right? Then we have potential meters. Uh, basically, you can position some. Uh, uh, sensors for like uh, sliding mechanisms, right? So, like uh, if it is like uh, sliding, right? Based on that, you can get some idea about the resistance, right? Then uh, we can basically quantify that as well, right? Then we have the uh, light sensors, right? That uh, in this case, so the resistance will be changed with the light, right? So <clears throat> if the light is uh, appear in the surrounding, so the resistance will be changed, right? Based on that, we can get some idea about the uh, outer world ambient light, right? So, <clears throat> so this LDR is a, like a very simple uh, sensor, but it's basically, uh, basically it's uh, save you some money, right? So. It, ha it, it doesn't have that much uh, uh, like uh, accuracy or the like uh, what you call the resolution, but it can do the basic work, right? So <clears throat> that LDR is a, uh, will basically save some money for you, right? So <clears throat> yeah, this is not like a very advanced one, right? So the responses will be slow, right? Also, the resistance is non-linear, right? You, can't, you cannot get some idea directly, but you can 
get some work out of that, right? Then, uh, yeah, this is what I said before, right? So the <clears throat> measurement of a, like this kind of a bending, right? So you can mount your sensor here, right? When this hand moving, right? So this resistance will be changed, right? You can measure the resistance, okay? Based on the resistance, you can get some idea. Then again, this uh, wall of the collision detection, right? You can have your sensor here, right? With the collision that uh, <clears throat> that uh, sensor will be bent, right? You can, you, if you have two sensors, then you can have a comparison and get some idea about, okay, <clears throat> if one sensor resistance is <clears throat> higher in that case, there may be some collision on that side, like that. Then uh, you can mount that sensor on the, this kind of, uh, 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 like weighing system, right? You can put your weight here, right? With the weight, the sensor will uh, bend, right? Based on that, you can get some idea about the the weight of this uh, set of package, right? So these are the resistive sensors, right? So these are the bending sensors, right? Then uh, <clears throat> any questions up to now? Mm, sir, small question. Uh, not regarding the resistive sensor. Mm. Uh, sensors. Uh, you said that uh, the sensors always convert the uh, environmental signal into a digital signal. Mm -hmm. Is digital? Can we get some analog signal using sensors? No, I mean like uh, yeah, not. Uh, I mean like so the outer world is in the analog scenario right that means like some kind of a continuous one that's basically analog right so what do you mean by the uh, there are some analog and digital signals that's a two that's a different aspect right so <clears throat> it's like uh, if you can have some kind of a discrete and uh, uh, continuous outputs so those are the analog and digital classification that's a different part right so in the like i said before like so in here, basically, we're going to sense the analog world and make some change it to a some readable uh, parameter in the digital world. Like uh, we, we are basically working in the digital world, no? right? So if you are working in the computer or the microcontroller or the processor, something like that, so those are in the digital, right? So you need to uh, get the analog uh, parameter, right? then change it to some form of a digital one. To, so only the digital things are understandable by the our digital uh, <coughs> uh, equipments. No? So yeah, that's the digital. thing I said, right? When you are classification, when you are classifying the outputs, there are, that's true, we have the analog and digital thing. That's a different one, right? Uh, sorry, sir, I got a little bit confused. <laughs> okay, right. So this is, the classification is a different one, analog and digital. So, so my idea was to tell that so all the items all the <clears throat> things are working in the analog world we are in uh, ones and zeros right so we need to bridge these two environment right so that's where the sensors work right so sensor uh, sensors basically refer the analog world and make it some readable uh, uh, as uh, readable uh, parameter or the <clears throat> readable uh, output for our digital world. So that's the basic idea. So when you are classifying the uh, sensors, yes, we have a local digital sensor. That's a different story. Right. Any other questions? Okay, right. Then uh, up now we discuss about the sensor, what is sensing and the classification of sensing and some uh, brief taxonomy about picking a good sensor. Then uh, we discuss about the resistive sensors, right? Then this is the second one. We are going to discuss about proximity and range sensors, right? So, 
<clears throat> so in the proximity and range sensor, the basic idea is to we going to detect some uh, uh, some kind of obstacle or some kind of uh, object without any uh, contact, right? So you can't touch the object without touching the object. You should know there is an object. That's the basic idea, right? So in there are some typical applications like object detection, collision avoidance, then uh, object verification, and like you can do some countings as well, right? So then uh, these are some uh, commonly used uh, proximity sensors, right? So photoelectric sensors, inductive proximity sensors, capacitive sensors, then ultrasonic sensors, right? So <clears throat> first we're going to discuss about the infrared sensors, right? So first one is the intensity-based infrared, right? So in here, basically, the basic idea is to be referring the reflective of the sensor, right? So <clears throat> you have a, you have a sensor, you have a IR LED that basically uh, some uh, gives some uh, waves like that, right? If there is a <clears throat> some sort of a obstacle in that case, so the there is a we have another receiver here, right? So the receiver we won't be get the this set of waves, right? So the in intensity is changing, right? So based on the intensity changing, we can refer, okay, there is some obstacle, right? Then if you are sensing the reflectiveness, right? So if this, <clears throat> these uh, waves gonna hit some place like this, right? Then from this place, so the waves going to reflect like this, right? Based on the reflectiveness, you can, so this is the, uh, listener right so basically it can uh, look look for the reflective waves based on that you can tell that okay there is some kind of obstacle at this kind of range right so that's the basic idea so this intensity based infrared they are telling that there's a basically is to implement <clears throat> and these uh, intensity based infrared basically are sensitive to ambient light as well right so in the EV3, we have this uh, uh, this sensor. This one, right? So by using this one, you can basically uh, do some uh, like uh, path following robots. You can basically do some some kind of those kind of things, right? You can basically identify the reflectiveness of the path and the normal uh, uh, surroundings, right? So something like this. If we have path like this, right? Then uh, you have your sensor here. This sensor can identify the reflectiveness of this material and the surrounding material, right? So suppose these are in kind of a wood or something like that, the surroundings, and uh, this is some kind of uh, plastic or something kind of that. So the reflectiveness, uh, reflective factor is change uh, the different, right? Based on that, you can <clears throat> get some idea whether this sensor is in the path or out of the path, like that. Based on those two cases, you can, uh, do some uh, path following robot, right? Then uh, we have a modulated infrared. Those are like, uh, like those are basically newer, uh, like uh, AC machines, then uh, in newer like uh, TVs, right? You have some modulated infrared, right? You, are, you have some kind of a frequency, right? Based on that frequency, you are uh, uh, sending some burst of uh, waves, right? So those are modulated, right? In that uh, modulated infrared, you should have a modulated IR signal, right? So those are basically insensitive to ambient light, right? So otherwise, when you are like, try to change the uh, temperature of the AC, then if, if you have the light, 
then the the output will be changed now right so that's not going to happen because those are modulated right those are only uh, looking for the frequency right then we have uh, infrared ranging the distance sensors right you can measure the distance to obstacle those kind of thing right so distance you can do some short distance measurement <clears throat> so <clears throat> this is the uh, intensity based infrared right so if we have so this kind of things we basically used to uh, get some count right so this so this is we have a IR led here that's basically always uh, sending some value to this uh, ir right so this is the listener right so <clears throat> if some uh, obstacle is uh, crossing this one right in that case so the this uh, input input signal input waves is now differ right basically so that will have a kind of a drop in the voltage right that kind of scenario we can identify okay there is some obstacle between these two right so these kind of things basically we use to uh, use for the counting aspects right <clears throat> and this one is the reflective one right you can send some signal and uh, that will be reflect on the surface and come back to another uh, listener right so these things basically are sensitive to ambient light right yeah work very well in the controlled environment right so the if the environmental factors are changing the output will be different right then uh, the IR reflective sensor right <clears throat> so we have an emitter and the detector right so this is our IR sensor right so this one is the emitter the LED right so that basically sending some uh, waves, right? And here we have some obstacle, right? Then uh, this wave is going to hit this obstacle and get reflected. And here we have the receiver, right? So the receiver basically sends in the, the input waves, right? Then uh, based on the intensity levels, it can test the the distance or the reflective factor of this object like that it can do some uh, we can do some uh, calculation based on the receiving uh, wave right <clears throat> okay so the more light reaching the phototransistor right we have a phototransistor in the the receiver end right if if the if we if that uh, phototransistor receiving more lights right in that case, the current uh, current means the what you call like current uh, flow is going to get higher, right? So in that kind of scenario, we can identify, we can get some uh, uh, some parameter based on the based on this uh, receiving uh, light, right? So if the light intensity is higher. The current flow is higher, right? That's the basic idea. To get the current light intensity higher, so in that kind of scenario, so the distance will be matter, and the the reflective aspect of this uh, material will be matter, right? <clears throat> yeah. So basic applications are the object detection and the line following then optical encoders, right? So those are some uh, applications in the <coughs> reflective sensor, IR reflective sensor, right? So the draw drawbacks basically is that depends that sensitive to, to, to the ambient light, right? So if the ambient light is getting higher or lower, so that will be effective uh, receiving end. So the phototransistor will get confused, right? If we, uh, there are suppose there is some kind of a laser or something that will uh, eventually focus into the upper receiver so the readings will be changed right 
<clears throat> yeah so the distance and the reflectiveness of the object those are the sensitive factors of this uh, uh, receiving signal right so we discussed those things right then the modulated infrared right so as we discussed right so basically those uh, basically that these waves are modulated in kind of a frequency right so in the receiving end, there is a demodulator, right? So here we send in some signal in kind of a higher frequency, right? Then gives our space, then sending another signal, right? And this is the receiving end, this part, right? The receiving end, we have a demodulator. <clears throat> So it will uh, look into the uh, what are the the check with the what is the wave which get right based on that it will uh, do some uh, work right suppose this is meaning by uh, turn on right so it will detect okay it's turn on then do so, basically call that function right so this will be if it is off signal right. So it will detect it as of, then it will do that function. Like that, it has a demodulator at the receiving end that will uh, receive the signal and demodulate it and find what is the that uh, code in that uh, signal, right? Based on that uh, code, that will execute the command, right? So these are uh, less sensitive to the ambient light or the reflectiveness of the object, right? So as you can uh, as you can know, like uh, we can basically uh, like uh, on off like uh, lock car lock your car with the, when you are in the uh, uh, like uh, we, suppose you are in the room and you can simply if the car is nearby we can basically unlock and lock your car right so those uh, these modulator signals basically <clears throat> go through these walls right and still it's not going to change right so this is uh, not sensitive to this kind of the reflectiveness right so that those can be like uh, it can some portion will be reflected and some portion will be go through the if 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 the if we have the enough energy then the, the, those waves will be go through the obstacle right so it's still the if we are sending on signal it's still it will get as on right it will not sensitive to the uh, reflectiveness of the other ambient light that's the basic idea right yeah yeah remotes basically we have those uh, modulated infrared right then uh, we have a ir proximity sensor <clears throat> so those are or it has a modulated IR LED, right? The sending one and uh, detector, it has a uh, built-in demodulator, right? So, <clears throat> so the detection range will be uh, differ with the objects, whether the object is or the surface, whether it's a rough surface or the shiny one, like that based on that, the the reflection will be changed based on that the detection will be also changed right also this IR proximity sensors are insensitive to the ambient light as well right so <clears throat> the basic applications are like a rough distance we can get some uh, rough idea about the distance to an obstacle then uh, we can use it as obstacle avoidance right then uh, line following wall following those things right then uh, this IR distance sensor basically, uh, so we have a emitted emitting end we have here, IR emitter, right? So mm -hmm. this IR emitter basically emits some signals and these signals will be hit some kind of a target here, right? Then, <clears throat> so then it will be get reflected. Then, uh, you have here your uh, detector lens. So this is the detector lens, right? So this is your receiving end, right? So 
here we have the, this uh, position sensitive uh, detect, right? So based on this, you can basically uh, find this, uh, the distance for a set uh, kind of a target, right? So <clears throat> the same things we discussed earlier as well, right? So it has IR emitter and it has a focusing lens that will uh, <clears throat> focus to this uh, detector here, right? So then we have this position sensitive detector. This focusing lens focus to this position sensitive detector. You are uh, emitting end, basically you emit something else then that will be hit some uh, obstacle, get reflected there, right? So based on the uh, intensity, right? You can get some idea about the distance to this uh, obstacle or the target, right? <clears throat> so this uh, reflective uh, wave will be uh, depend on the re reflective factors of this uh, surface, right? So based on those surfaces, so the reflectiveness will be different, right? Then uh, this is the IR distance sensor, the basic one we are using the sharp IR. So this is the code. Uh, we can be uh, like uh, measure about like 10 centimeter to 80 centimeter range, right? So it kind of a reliable uh, distance measurement based uh, regards to the other sensors with the cost as well, right? So this is previously cost about like uh, 1000 or something like that. I couldn't remember, right? I don't know about the <coughs> price now, right? So earlier this one was much cost effective one and good uh, reliable measurement as well, right? Then uh, immune and gear light, right? So <clears throat> basically, uh, we can use for to get the distance to the some uh, obstacle or like uh, wall following those stuff. We can use this IR distance sensor, right? Any questions up to now? <laughs> then we're going to discuss about the ultrasonic sensor. Then, uh, yeah. These are the set of sensors we have, right? So you don't need to specifically remind all the stuff, right? Just keep in mind what is mean by the uh, uh, modulated one, what I mean by the, uh, say, uh, like intensity one, right? So if we have that kind of a basic idea, then that will be enough, right? <clears throat> then, uh, so the next one is about uh, ultrasonic sensor, right? So in here, basically, uh, we're going to send some uh, uh, radio signal, right? And uh, wait until it's uh, with some obstacle then receive, right? So you know this equation, uh, distance based on the velocity and the uh, time, right? Right, then, uh, for sound, it, I think uh, uh, 0 0.3 meters for one uh, millisecond, right? So, <clears throat> so this uh, in the ultrasonic sensor, these are we have the RF radio frequencies. That means the light, right? So that that means for one second it uh, goes about 90 kilometers, right? So that means like very hard to uh, measure the short distance, right? For very short distance, those are not very sensitive, right? So for that kind of short distance, we can go for the IR, but uh, if we have to uh, go like uh, sufficient distance to measure sufficient distance, then you, in that kind of scenario, you can use the ultra, ultrasonic sensor, right? So that will be, uh, so, here we have the emitter, right? So this emitter basically uh, <clears throat> sends some signals. Then uh, that will be hit some obstacle and come back, right? So some time will be, uh, yeah, that's like T type, right? So you know the speed of the radio frequency, right? In that case, you can 
find the distance. That's the basic idea, right? We just need to uh, find the exact time that the uh, wave received again, right? So if we if you know the time, you know the speed, right? That is simple maths. You can find the distance, right? <clears throat> so in the emitting end, so it will uh, send a quick burst of ultrasound like uh, 50 kilohertz, right? So <clears throat> this is the uh, emitting end, right? So it will send the burst of waves, right? Then we have a object here, right? So when we are sending the signal, you start to count the time, right? Then uh, if it is, uh, then the waves will go here, hit the object and get reflected. When the receiving end receive the signal at that point, you stop the counting and uh, get the measurement of the time, right? So <clears throat> if you know the time, you know the speed. In that case, you can uh, uh, find the distance, right? So the basic maths are here, right? Then uh, in the ultrasonic sensor, they are telling like it has some kind of a 30 degree uncertainty. So the object will be within 30, 30 degree, right? So we can't exactly tell the correct position. So the object will be within 30 degree uh, uh, location, right? <clears throat> Then, uh, yeah, then again, we have this one called a Polaroid ultrasonic ranging system, right? Basically developed for autofocus of the cameras, right? It has uh, some uh, range like six inches to 35 feet, right? So huge range it has. <clears throat> so in the transmitter, we see it has 50 kilohertz, uh, uh, wave propagation, then uh, what else? Yeah, so in here, basically, a uh, blanking signal like it's blocked any return signal for like uh, this kind of uh, this, this much of time right after the transmission, right? So it first sends some uh, signal, then it will uh, block for this kind of 2.38 millisecond. Right, so this kind of uh, uh, specification of this uh, specific uh, polaroid algorithm training system, right? So it's blocked for this kind of this much of time. Then, uh, then it start to receive the uh, waves, right? So, <clears throat> so basic algorithm sense applications are like uh, when you are making some radar systems, like you can. Uh, basically use this ultrasonic sensor, right? Then uh, mapping, basically mapping, uh, if you need to map some uh, room, right? So in here, you have a robot here, right? and uh, here we have a chair, right? Then uh, <clears throat> you can have a IR sensor, so ultrasonic sensor and scan the whole room, right? So in that kind of scenario, you can, here you can see the uh, output, right? Scanning from uh, left to right. Here we have the length of the echo, right? <clears throat> Here we can see this. So in the doorway, we have the highest echo because so the waves will be go out of the room, right? Then uh, from the chair, we have some kind of a, this much of uh, echo, right? Based on this mapping, you can uh, do some uh, get some idea about the room, right? So it have some openings from this end, right? Then you have some uh, very closed object in this kind of area. Then uh, in this kind of place, you have very short distance from the robot, right? Based on like that, you can get some idea about the surface as well. Here, the chair, the if we, if you have the enough uh, sensitivity in our sensors. In that kind of scenario, you can basically 
get the idea about this surface, right? Like that. So <clears throat> in the basic applications are like uh, distance measurement and mapping some uh, uh, rooms like them, right? So after now we discuss uh, about uh, IR sensors and the ultrasonic sensors and how the ultrasonic sensors work, right? So D equals V times T, right? So these are these things we discuss, right? Then uh, when you're using this kind of uh, <clears throat> ultrasonic sensors, we have uh, some sort of issues as well, right? So suppose we have a set of uh, robots like this, right? So the other robots are also using the same ultrasonic sensors, right? So at some point you will, when you are when you are waiting for the suppose this is your robot one emitter one, and uh, this is the receiving end, right? So you can suppose you can large, right? So in here you will have another robot, right? This emitter two. This is receiving end, right? So this emitter will uh, send some signals, right? So these signals will receive to another robot as well, right? Then again, so this robot will send some signals, right? So these signals will receive at the other robot as well, right? So the readings will be uh get some noises right readings will be not very accurate right so in that kind of scenario you have to think about those things as well right so the effects of other robots in the same environment then uh, <clears throat> the environmental factors like uh, environmental noises like if you have some kind of a uh, motors or the this kind of high speed uh fluid flows then uh, pumps right so this will also generate some uh, radio frequencies, right? So this will be uh, not like, uh, like have a specific uh, wave, but like it will adapt, it will as another noise to the receiving end, right? So the receiving end looking for some kind of a clear, some kind of 50 kilohertz, something like that, right? Mm -hmm. So that wave will be, have some kind of a noise portion as well, right? So the <clears throat> so the input will be have the noises, right? You have to deal with the noises. You have to come up with some uh, noise filtering aspects as well. Then uh, there are some crosstalk will be occurred in the same onboard ultrasonic sensor as well, right? So <clears throat> suppose this is your robot, right? If we have two emitters, right? I don't know whether it's clear, right? So suppose your uh, robot has not only one ultrasonic sensor, it has a couple of ultrasonic sensors, right? So the waves will be crossed off, right? So, so the one will be affect to another. Right? So there may be some issues, right? You need to think about those things as well, right? So these are the set of issues we have to deal with, right? Some uh, come from the environmental aspects, some from other robots, and some from your own robots, uh, different sensor, right? You have to deal with those issues as well. <clears throat> right, any questions up to now? Just get the brief idea, right? Don't worry about the specification of each sensor. I'm not going to ask for those stuff, right? If we have the theoretical idea about how the sensor works, what is the specific parameter that sensor uh, looking for, then that will be enough. Right? Are you guys sleeping? Now, Shika, Uppala. Uh -huh. 
I mean, mm. everything is so far clear. Right. So we'll come to the end of the lecture. I'll uh, stop around 4.30. So, yeah, 4.30, right? So <clears throat> then uh, we have a laser French finder. So this is one from this specific uh, brand, right? So in here, so these lasers basically have like a two to 500 meter range, right? Then the resolution is high. You can see like 10 millimeter, right? When you are come to the ultrasonic sensor, it doesn't have that uh, much of resolution. Right, in the IR sensor you have like uh, much uh, higher resolution than the ultrasonic sensor, but like uh, this laser one, it has the good resolution here, right? Then the FOV around 100 to 180 degrees. So these are the those this specification that's about this uh, specific item, so specific sensor, right? You don't need to uh, remind those stuff. Right, so <clears throat> these lasers are emitted to dust and fogs. That means, like, that will be uh, propagated through the dust and fog that won't be change the waves. Right, so that's the recap. So, I'll come to the so we started from the what do you mean by sensing, then. Uh, we discuss about transductions, then uh, classification of the sensors, then uh, some sensing taxonomy. <clears throat> then we discuss about resistive sensors. When the sensor bending, the resistance will be increased, right? And discuss about the proximity sensors. And discuss IR intensity based ones. Then the modulated infrared sensors. Then uh, IR distance sensor, this one, a sharp IR one. Then uh, discuss about the ultrasonic sensor, right? Then how the basic idea about the ultrasonic sensor that will be uh, how the sensor will work, right? Then the uh, issue with that, the ultrasonic sensor. Then uh, the noise issues that are in the ultrasonic sensors then the uh, discuss about this laser range of right so that's the end of the lecture one of that basic means like the seventh or i mean the seventh lecture right yeah that is Right. So from up to now, you discussed some theoretical aspects, then uh, hierarchical paradigm, then the reactive and subsumption architecture. Right. So if you can uh, uh, come to the university physical, then we can arrange some uh, <clears throat> practicals for you guys using the EV3. Right. So then uh, at the end of the uh, this lecture series, uh, you should be able to do a project as a small one, right? So you can basically port the EV3 directly using the Java or Python, right? So I have some video that I did. When I was in the intern, I uh, don't you know whether I have that. <clears throat> so this is the uh, can you guys see the screen? Yes, sir. Right, so this is the EV3, right? So when I was in the intern time, so I did something like 
some uh, reinforcement learning on the EV3. Uh, reinforcement means like a Q learning, some basic algorithm in the reinforcement. So, <clears throat> so here, this is that uh, uh, idea sensor that sensing the, the reflective factors, factor about this path and the surrounding. And this is the touch sensor, right? These are the wheels we have, right? So I, so I need to uh, implement some uh, line following uh, robot, right? So this one without the reinforcement learning. So as you can see, so that we basically make the turns, right? When we go out of the path, make a right or left turn, right? Simple scenario, right? But so if you see, it's basically, uh, <clears throat> basically it's make some uh, left and right turns, right? You can see it's not going straight. You can see it's making the left and right turns, right? When it's going out of the path, it's, uh, make the necessary turn, right? Then uh, this one, when you are doing the uh, Q learning, the reinforcement learning, as you can see, so it will basically explore the options, right? So, so these options I didn't in code, right? So I give the options, set of options and the reward system, right? based on the rewards, basically picking the most best, best option out of the set of options, right? So these turns, I didn't tell what, what to do, what, what kind of turn it's need, right? So these turns and uh, reversing things basically done by the robot itself, right? So it's reversing, right? It's now, learn how to reverse when needs go out of the track. Now we know how to reverse, right? Here you can see it's basically when needs go out of the track, it's reverse, right? When it's in the track, it's going straight, right? Here you can see it's aggressively making the turns, right? Like that, if it's in the line, you don't need to do the, <clears throat> Uh, turns right you can go straight when it's go out of the track you can uh, do the reversing or something like that right so these are you can see these are some uh, learning stages right and the final one will look like this right so now the turns are optimized you can see Like that, it will make the turns more efficiently, right? So, so I'm planning to do some kind of thing for you guys as well, right? So, if you guys come to the university in the physical manner, then we can have some uh, physical practicals and do this kind of uh, small project for as a side. Right. So discuss with, with your colleagues and let us know. We have only like uh, how many people are doing this robotics? Here we have one, two, three, four. And so we tell that he is sick. Right. That means there are five guys in the robotics, I think. Yes. Sir. We also have Anuki, but she didn't oh, for any lectures, we're not sure. Mm -hmm. I think she's not doing it, so I think it's fine. Okay, right. So in that case, discuss with your friends and let us know. Then uh, if you can come to the university, then we can arrange some practicals, right? So this is a practical subject, and uh, so you should do, in, do the practicals not the simulations, right? So otherwise it will get bored, right? So 